G'day fellas and welcome to a bit of a different type of video. In this video we're going to be doing a bit of theory crafting, a bit of a conversation uh, and uh, well it's it's not really a conversation, it's more just me me talking. It's a TED talk basically. We're going to be talking about the English because as you guys know in the pup there are some absolutely huge changes for the English. Now I'm on the pup at the moment even though it's the, uh, the 28th, about to be the 29th of January. Uh, I've still managed to keep myself locked inside here uh, on, on the PC. Um, yeah, so at the moment, the English is played 30% of the time on the ladder, uh, and that's pretty much at all levels it's played at. Uh, I suspect with these changes, it's probably going to increase even more. I suspect it's probably going to rise to 35, maybe even 40%, which means that when you're laddering, you can expect to be facing up against an English player at least once every three games, maybe even once every two games, and hey, you might have a hot streak and get a whole bunch of mirrors. And in saying that, it it's subsequently really, really important that we focus on the English mirror and understand how that plays out and the the reason why it plays out that way. Now, the things that I'm going to be talking about are not just specific to the Conqueror 3 plus level. Uh, this is relevant to all of your games, uh, whether that's the bronze level, whether that's the plat level, whether that's the Conqueror 3 plus level. So let's get into it. So we're just going to start talking about English strategy and the reason why certain strategies are going to exist. Uh, so the most common strategy that you're you're going to be seeing an English player go for is a fast castle. That might be a two town center fast castle. That could be a one town center fast castle. Uh, and the reason why is because in English mirrors especially, uh, but in, in in English games in general, it's very hard to attack an English player. An English player has got so many different bonuses for their defenses. Just to go through it. Okay, so we've got the network of castles, so they get that extra 15% uh, attack speed on all of their units, villages, everything. Uh, which obviously goes up to 40%, but that's not really relevant. Um, the next thing is that they have access to defensive brig, which gives the extra arrows at the town center. They also have villages which have bows, so these are all further defensive bonuses. Their farms are cheaper. This is also a defensive bonus, even though you might not think of this as a defensive bonus, because it means that I don't have to leave my base to go and get food. So if you're attacking me and, you know, blocking my my berries or my deer, well, I don't care because I'm making farms and it's very cheap for me to do that. Uh, in addition to that, I also have longbows, which have two range and they also have an extra damage. So these are really nice units that I can keep nice and safe underneath my town center. I don't have to worry too much about it overextending because I've got that extra range. And on top of that, I've got access to the council hall, which is a double archery range and I make it and subsequently get it for free because it's my landmark. So all in all, I think we've got about seven bonuses that all add up to English being just an incredible early game defender. And it's because of that reason that you can almost be guaranteed if you do try and attack an English player early on, they will very easily hold your attack. Even if you were to play against an English player who was going to town centers, it would be very difficult to attack into them. And my suspicion is you'd still probably lose. If Even if you're, if you're in an equal skill level uh, and both of you guys understand what you're doing, uh, I see no reason as to why the English player wouldn't win in that situation. So now that we're aware of, of that, what kind of happens is because everybody becomes aware of that, right? What, like once you start reaching the higher levels, you become it'll become very clear to you. If you try and attack an English opponent, they'll go for a two town center play. You're just going to lose because they're going to outscale you. They'll get to castle faster. They'll get to imperial faster and you will just lose on the village account in the end. So what happens is a bit of an economic arms race where both players look to go for two town centers. And then from there, you can make a decision. Do I go for two town centers and then attack my enemy? Do I go for like a man-at-arms and longbow attack or maybe throw in some spearmen? Well, you can try and do that. But once again, it comes down to the defender's advantage because you've got all of these great things that are really helping you out. So what we tr what we tend to see players do is look for light harass, not all out attacks, just light harass, a longbow here, a longbow there. That's it. And up to the castle age. And we see typically three um, three town centers or two town centers and the king's palace of course um, and this is where the English meta is kind of at the moment sometimes it does change depending on who you watch and that kind of thing but the, the most commonly accepted meta is, is this sort of thing and once you get to uh, castle age the main focus is on picking up relics and just creating lots of knights uh, knights are, are the most important unit so this is pretty much where we're at at the moment uh, in the meta but I suspect there's going to be some big changes to it now 
one of the things to note is when we talk about unit composition uh, for the English, I've run testing on this. So you're just going to have to take my word. I'm not going to be able to show show it to you because I, I want to talk about the things that we've got in, in here in front of us. So essentially, th there's the, the, the main unit composition that you can go with the English that's going to be the best unit composition is crossbows and knights. Now, if you try and make only crossbows, you will lose to crossbow knights. If you try to make only knights, you will lose to crossbow and knights. If you make pretty much anything, you will lose to crossbow knights. There is one counter to it, though, and that is knights and horsemen. That's the only counter, but that's a very, very bold counter because even just a couple of spearmen would probably ruin your day. Uh, so crossbow knight seems to be the pretty stock standard thing, but there is one other thing that I do think will probably come up in the meta. Uh, we will, I, I suspect we, we might see pe uh, players looking to test it with the English, and that's going to be mangonels crossbows and spearmen so playing the same way that a mongol player would play so you have your crossbows you have your spears and that's going to defend against cavalry and it's going to defend against pretty much every unit except for archers and then you're going to deal with longbows or archers with mangonels and then it becomes much more orientated about defending the mangonels and i can tell you right now after doing you know significant amounts of testing i, I tested with kanoki for probably about two or three hours with all of the different theories and we did um you know reverse testing so basically so it would be me doing the the knights and crossbows and him doing longbows and knights and then we'd switch it and we'd always come to the same result so it doesn't matter the skill level doesn't matter the micro difference it will always pretty much be the the, the same thing uh, but the mangonel does shift things around a little bit you're never going to be able to take out the mangonels uh with your cavalry if your enemy is any any decently uh, competent at defending those mangonels so the only way you're going to be able to deal with that is through springlets so crossbow knight will still lose uh to spearman knight or sp sorry spearman crossbow even without the mangonels so what you actually need to do is you need to add in longbows that's the difference so it's it, it you start entering into this sort of uh this triangular composition where it's got like spearman and crossbows will counter knights and crossbows but will lose to knights and longbows whereas knights and longbows will lose to spear or will lose to crossbows and you, you get you get the picture you get the picture it, it, it's complex so anyway now that we know that okay so now that we've established this and 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 built this out now the question becomes okay well how do you get an advantage if if you know all of these things and you're able to move forward from from this and say okay well we know that people are going to be orientated more towards a second town center because of the defensive advantages of the civilization and it's likely that we'd see a follow-up with a castle age timing as well uh just simply because it, it, it it's very hard to find a window between your enemy getting that second town center and their castle age because you, you're not talking about much time it's probably about five minutes that you're talking about um so what can we do and in my opinion, I think the best answer is just going to be delay tactics. So I've done some theory crafting about it. And at the moment, my thoughts are that the most likely thing that we're going to see come towards the future of the English. Where, where, where does the future of the English go? I actually think it's going to be in the Dark Age. I think that it's very likely that we're going to be seeing people look to play men at arms on the opening. And the reason why is because when you go for a men at arms opening your enemy is given a choice so the men at arms will arrive typically before the council hall or the abbey of kings gets dropped but if you see a men, a men at arms all of a sudden it becomes a bit more relevant to potentially go for an abbey of kings the trouble that you're going to have is being able to afford a king how do you react to a men at arms as the english what what is your response that that is the question that we're looking at because the honest answer is I, I really don't know. What is the best thing to do? Do you just go council hall and just build up to like five or six longbows? And if that's the case, well, your enemy has forced your hand on which landmark you go, and they've forced you to make six longbows or five longbows or three longbows, whatever the, the longbow number is. So they've forced you to do something, and they've idled you throughout that duration, and maybe they were also idling your stone, so you weren't able to get that second town center down, so they're going to be able to... They, they'll get their town center up before you. And so now we enter into this kind of like this space where we know roughly where the direction will be. But my suspicion as to what we might actually see is a, a, a change in scouting patterns. I think probably what's going to be most likely happening in English mirrors is that you are going to see players send their scouts 
directly to the enemy's base almost immediately. And the idea is that they're checking for a barracks. They want to see an early barracks or see if there's not an early barracks. And if there is an early barracks, what the response is going to be is an outpost. Because the English start with 200 wood. So you can afford a house and you can afford a mining camp and you can afford, afford an outpost. And that's it. That's all you would spend. And it doesn't take long to build an outpost. It takes a minute. And when you think about the speed that a men at arms trains at, together with the speed that it walks across the map, 15 seconds to be trained. I think it actually comes... Does it come down to 12 seconds for the English? Or is it just 15 at a base? It might just be 15 at the base. Um, but it takes a long time to walk across the map. Uh, so you can actually counter your enemy going for an early barracks and an early men at arms just by putting down an outpost on your gold. Uh, now, obviously, that gets a little bit more complex because now all of a sudden... You've got an outpost on your gold, but how are you going to get access to your stone? And this is where the next steps come. And this is where I think it gets a little bit crazy for this, the my theory on the future of the English. So because we know this, because we know that people are going to be going for a men at arm rush, they're going to be aggressive. They're going to be able to shut down your gold. They're going to be able to shut down your stone. The outpost can defend one of those two things, but it probably can't defend two, you know, unless you get a really good spawn. So, my suspicion is what you're going to be seeing people do is go for fast castles, but naked fast castles. They're not going to go for, lo a, like, a, f a little bit of longbow harass here or there. Or they, might, they might go for a little bit of longbow harass here or there, but they're not going to go for a second town center. They're not going to go for 12 plus farms in the feudal age. They're going to focus on getting up to the castle age as soon as they can. And when they get to the castle age, you might be thinking, okay, Drongo, this is an easy one. They're going to go for a king's palace because when they go for the king's palace, they've got the second town center. But that's wrong. It's actually... This is the, this is the theory so far. The theory is actually going to be the white tower. And I know that people are like, Drongo, don't just stop. We're, I'm rolling my eyes. Stop it, stop it, stop it. There's no possible way it could be the white tower. Okay, but hear me out. When you reach the Castle Ages English, as, as I mentioned before, there's a, there's a few goals. Number one, you want to set up some stables so that you begin making knights. Number two, you want to try and get a monastery down so that you can start collecting relics. These things are really, really important for you to do. Now, the White Tower has a little bit of the Burgrave to it. In that, it can now generate or create, train, whatever it is. It, it trains units 100% faster. Which means that your knight, instead of it taking 35 seconds to come out, now comes out in 17 seconds. Doesn't actually show the knight, but it comes out in 17 seconds. So your knight is now produced 18 seconds faster than an enemy who went for a king's palace. Because they, assuming you guys age up at the same time and they've built their stable, it will be 18 seconds. So you'll make it all the way across to the, map, the other side of the map. And for every villager you kill, you're closer to victory. And because your knight is in the enemy's base, you're killing villagers. And this is able to bypass. The, the, the reason why the knight is the key unit here is because the knight bypasses ab absolutely every English defensive mechanism that there is because of its high base armor. The longbowman, well, it doesn't do anything. It's got that extra base armor, which means that it's going to take a lot of shots farms well guess what i can dive the town center i don't care about farms i dive the town center i'm gonna tank those shots i don't care villages with bows i don't care about bows i've got four armor with plus five which will be coming on the way blacksmith upgrades gonna be really key here we want to get to five armor that, that, that's so key it's ba it get, basically reduces the damage by half and that's why it's so important uh we don't care about the extra arrows being fired at us because we're we, we've got five armor so you're just doing one damage to me anyway uh, we don't care about your network of castles. You can fire those arrows faster at me. I don't care. They're only doing one damage. They don't hurt me. This is the reason why the knight is going to be so much stronger. And now the the final cherry on top as to why the White Tower will be the landmark that I think people are going to be going for instead of the King's Palace is because for the White Tower, you don't actually have to spend the 300 wood on the stables. That 300 wood you think about it, right? Okay, when you're going for a standard play with the King's Palace, like let's say you go for a, a naked fast castle, how many villages have you got at that time? Maybe 23, maybe 24 villages you've got when you drop down your King's Palace? 
maybe 25, maybe 26. So, you know, it, it, it's somewhere in like that mid-20 range. 300 wood is a fair chunk of change. If you want to go for that 300 wood, you're going to need to do that in the transition period. Otherwise, you're going to be delaying your age up. And that means you're going to be behind the person who goes directly for the White Tower. And now if you're behind them, obviously that means that you're going to be even further behind them because now you've got a, you've set, you've you saved up for that. But remember that we've got the White Tower, which is producing our, our night 18 seconds faster. And it's, it's going to be in our base sooner. And so because of this, that 300 wood becomes a big problem. A really, really big problem, that 300 wood. Because the problem that you've got is you want to try and age up as quickly as possible. And normally that's like between say 10 and 15 villagers is is like the sweet spot for you aging up to castle age at this time um so you want to do that but then when you're doing that you, you you're basically taking away half of your economy and you still need to train villagers which is going to be at least four villages, the equivalent of four villages on food so let's get rid of that uh and from there we're going to need to save up for our first night and our second night as well so now we have to save up for our nights and we have to save up for our stables and as you can see, knights are quite kind of expensive, right? 240 resources each. So you're looking at 480 plus the 300. So you're telling me in the transition period and and in the in the 20 seconds after that the stable's going down, or I, what is it, 30 seconds probably? Let me. I don't actually know. Yeah, 30 seconds. And the 30 seconds after that, you have to gather up 480 resources for the knights and 300 for the stables. I'll tell you right now. It's not possible. It's not possible. It's just too hard. There's not enough villager seconds for you to do it. And it is because of the, the haste and the pace of this opening as to why I think it will actually be the key in, in, this, uh, in, in, this, uh, in, in the way that this plays. Now, the next thing uh, to note, this is where it starts to get, this is where it starts to, do, to develop a little bit more. So it depends on what type of build order you use when you're going for something like this as to what speed you can get a white tower in. Um, whether you go for a wheelbarrow, whether you go for farms, these are all factors. Uh, but generally, you can expect to be aging up just shy of the eight-minute mark. Now, against an English player who goes for an early mana arms rush, they can hit you with a follow-up. They can hit you with longbows. They can hit you with, uh, you know, may maybe bring a couple of spearmen or something like that. But there are counters that you've got. You've got an outpost on top of the gold, and maybe you decide to go for an Abbey of Kings. Well, remember, you're playing... With the white tower you're making knights knights have got some of the highest health in the game so if there's any unit that's going to be able to get value out of the abbey of kings it's the knights and if there's any build order that's going to be making lots of knights it's this one so there you go and now you might be thinking but drongo we need the council hall because if our enemy makes spearmen uh and we've got knights we we need we need longbows to counter them well hold your horses the white tower acts as a keep with all behaviors meaning that it produces Longbows, produces spearmen, produces men at arms, knights, horsemen, Rebaldequin, springords, absolutely every military unit can be produced at the White Tower. Every single one. So that 300 wood that we were talking about earlier, multiply it again. Throw in another 600 wood for your siege workshops. That's right. Maybe you need to get out a couple of springords in a pinch. Boom. There you go. Couple more. There, there's some springords. Don't have to drop down your siege workshops. You don't have to drop down two siege workshops. Maybe maybe you need some uh, some spears out yourself. Maybe your enemy's making some knights and you're not confident with your position, so you, you get out some spears. Boom, White Tower. It's got you. The White Tower has got so much flexibility in it. And I know that the King's Palace looks like this really great idea to go for. But at the end of the day, if you can ensure that you've got priority over your enemy because you've, you're making knights faster than they are, then you've got yourself in a really good position. So that's the reason why I think the likely landmarks that we're actually going to be seeing in English mirrors are probably going to be the Abbey of Kings and the White Tower. The Abbey of Kings specifically because you also have access to the Knight. So we could see, um, you know, openings like the opening uh, that... I don't know whether it would be posted on YouTube just yet, uh, but I, I've got an English opening that I have posted or that I've recorded, which does uh, the... Uh, the king plus a couple of longbows. Something like that uh, can be more than enough to, to deal with the pressure that's put out by an early men at arms. Obviously, you need to throw down the outpost and that's going to cost a little bit more and delay you a little bit more. But 
you get the general gist of it. So that's my that's my thoughts. That's my uh, my theory crafting. Let me know what you think. I'm curious what you guys think of as well. Is there something that I've missed? Maybe, you know, what if your enemy puts an outpost on your gold? And now all of a sudden you can't gather the gold because your enemy put an outpost and maybe they got arrow slits on it. Yeah, that's a good point. That that could be a counter. So maybe you have to work to do that. But then, you know, if you go Abbey of Kings and you've got the king out, then the king can just kill the villager easily. Or may, what, what if you just pull five villagers and then just kill his villager? Like you just shoot the villager because you've got bows on your villagers. So there you go. There, there you go. I've, we've already worked up the counter to your counter that you were positing in the comments so stop writing that comment michael Re press that backspace key that's the enough of that enough of that anyway <laughs> anyway that is what i think the future of english is going to be let's see how it turns out but uh hey uh, you know i'm just going to be linking back to this video in a couple of months when we're watching golden league 2 and it's english mirrors everywhere as far as the eye can see and everyone's just going for abbey of kings white tower fast castles because it's the only way to play english anyway i'll catch you guys in the next one and thank you so much for watching